안녕하세요. 후에다 후에 매달은 good evening back to my channel. My name is Tian. I'm 28 years old and I'm in Liu Fontaine and I just want to say I hope that you are having a horrific Christmas. And if you're not watching this on Christmas, then I hope you are watching having a horrific day. And of course, because everything this Christmas in 2019 is horror themed, I'm not wishing you any bad luck or any curses or anything like that. It's just a cute little saying because everything is horror themed and I've been obsessed with horror things lately. So I thought to make this video pretty special. I wanted to tell you one of my scariest experience within the horror community, in the horror world of things. And some people might think it's true, some people might think it's fake, some people think that I'm being dramatic. This is just my true percent, my true percent, <laughs> my 100% true experience, experience that happened with me when I was about 16 years old. Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, that's completely up to you. This is a story from my experience. Uh, I've had maybe two or three experiences in my life with the paranormal, or with ghosts or with demons and things like that, which I'm really, really thankful about. It interests me a lot. It's definitely something that I'm thankful for being very heavily guarded against because the stories I've heard and the things I've heard and the few experiences I've had is not a fun thing. Anyway, so keeping with the trends of course, keeping with this whole idea of doing viral things, doing um, paying tribute to the YouTubers that I enjoy watching who I support dearly. This is specifically with having to do with Loie Lane. I think her YouTube channel is Loie Bug. If you want to go check her out, she really does some amazing content. And watching many of her videos inspired me to make this one of my viral trends that I wanted to do for this Christmas. So anyway, I was 16 years old when this happened and I went to church with um, my girlfriend at the time. I actually went with her and I think with her mom as well. I think they were never in part of that church. They were part of the church that my parents and I were going to, they were part of that church, all her daughter was, that's where we met. But then I started going to another church because they just had better music than my church. My church was very, very much for older people and I needed more. As a 16 year old, I wanted, I mean, I know different people have these different denominations that believe in different things. Other people want that happy clappy, other people don't. I want that happy clappy, I enjoy it, I'm extra. In most of my music, when I was younger, these days I'm quite diverse, but at that time I wanted, when it comes to things like praise and worship, things like that, yeah. And that's what I want. Anyway, so I did, we went, we went to church, everything was nice, everything was lovely, the people there were always nice and sweet, you got free coffee, talking about coffee, let me take a sip of my coffee this morning. Because it's currently, I think, like 5.30 in the morning because the dog, one of the dogs in the house, decided to wake me up 5 to 4, ah, 5 to 5 in the morning. Anyway, so I mentioned everything was, everything was beautiful. We did our praise and worship set. And then there was this one guy, now he was a skinny guy. He was a little bit awkward. I mean, I think he, he helped. I don't think he worked for the church, but I know he did help the church out a lot. So he was there. Uh, because he's part of the congregation, so why wouldn't he be there? But he, he made me uncomfortable, but he made other people uncomfortable. He was a bit weird and awkward and things like that. But it's like no one treated him badly. It was just one of those people he just made you uncomfortable. And it's not, he, it's not his life mission to do that. It's just how he is. And I know that night he was working at the door, greeting everyone as they walked in. Walked in, greeted him, sat down, we did some praise and worship. Um, so during this praise and worship session, of course, we're standing, clapping hands, singing. Very fun, enjoyable experience overall. And the after the praise and worship, the preacher comes onto the stage and he basically starts with his sermon. And out of nowhere, you literally just hear hear this booming voice and it sounded like he had a mic on but I know what it sound like sounds like to have a mic on but he was screaming or talking so loud but talking so clear it's like 
is he wearing a mic? But again, it it doesn't sound like he's talking through a mic. It's just he's talking so loud. And I mean, I know how to project my voice. I know how to use my voice to fill an auditorium. But we were a few hundred people in that auditorium. And it's a spacious auditorium. And for him to be able to throw his voice at that point, you need some serious good vocal training to be able to do that. And he does not have that training. And he was not wearing a mic at all as this church did not like have the lapel mics or those clip-on mics at all they use usually used handheld mics if i remember correctly and you just hear this booming voice from the back and he was declaring that he is jesus christ he's declaring that he is the savior he's jesus christ resurrected he's jesus christ returned and now he's walking down the aisle towards the stage and everybody's just sitting like what the fuck is happening this guy is proclaiming to be jesus his voice the sound of his voice the way his voice carries through that place is completely abnormal abnormal even thinking back now knowing what i know and having the experience i have with using voice is what he what what he did is sem semi impossible without any type of help so then he moved on to the stage. He was kept saying he was Jesus Christ. We need to go and confess our sins to him. On stage, the preacher was also like, what the fuck was happening? What? And of course, him being a preacher, him being knowledgeable what's going on. I can't exactly remember what was happening, but I think he was trying to tell us to calm down. And then his son, his son and I think two or three other congregation members, I think it was three or four or five, between three and five guys. Now I'm talking, his son went to the gym regularly. He was a buff dude. And then him and two or three other people. And, and like I said in the beginning, this guy was scrawny. This guy was really, he was a skinny guy and he was like preaching his Jesus. We need to confess our sins. And it took about three or four or five, I can't remember, I'm trying to think of, no, I think it was three or four, like, like, men, beefy men, man's man, men, to literally drag him, pull him, picking up any way to forcibly remove this guy from stage because he would not let go. And I mean, the preacher was at the same time also starting to pray and starting to also tell us or trying to pray and trying to keep us calm and was just sheer chaos. No one, um, everyone just stayed in their seats. No one like, ah, stood up and ran away. Ah! No one at least went like that. Everyone was like freaked out, but everyone was able to stay calm and just stay in their seats while this guy was proclaiming to be Jesus. So finally, these three or four men were, were able to drag him picking up off stage, but it was a fight to get him off stage. And he kept on screaming, he's Jesus Christ and we need to confess our sins. And he just kept on going and going and going and going until they actually get him out the off stage, behind stage, back through a door and they are gone. And then the preacher told us, no, you know what, this is what happened. Um, this guy clearly is possessed by something or something is definitely not right them. They are now busy praying with him. I think they sent another one or two of the like church elders, not like saying old men, but church elders or the other preachers specifically. Because I know the preacher's son was becoming a preacher or was a preacher at that stage. And of course they had one or two other preachers, so they said, can they just please go and assist them? So they went to pray for the guy. And then afterwards, Oh, afterwards he asked the band to just come up on stage and can we just sing another song just so you know to mellow out the vibes to calm everyone down and just that almost that that sense of doing something to take that negative energy and change it into something positive into something beautiful with the so then we sang a song and the service continued I cannot for the life of me remember what that preach a preach about, about that Sunday evening, there was a Sunday evening, but yeah, that was, and afterwards I spoke, I, I spoke with someone, and we spoke about demon possession, and there are very many signs, but one of the signs are like a person, it can be so 
inhumanely strong due to the position. They, the things, again, the same thing, they say, also say that that's one of the things. Another thing is also that whole thing of claiming to be Jesus Christ. They say that is also a way for a demon or for the devil to try to, you know, draw you in so you can, so they can brainwash you things and stuff like that. All that stuff, what he did with his voice, how he used his voice, and the way his voice changed, also a sign of demon position. Yeah, so that was just, that was a scary, scary thing back, back now. It isn't that scary anymore, as I do feel in my daily life, everyday life, I am a lot more protected against these things. For various reasons, not what the video is about. But at that time, I mean, it... It's not as scary as it was at that moment. It doesn't give me nightmares or chills or anything. It was just really... It's horrific in the sense that I saw someone being possessed, being taken over by something. And the whole events that happened afterwards is just... It was just mind-blowing. So, that is my horrific Christmas story for you about the time that I saw a man possessed by a demon in a church. And I think what makes the story more dramatic is that it, it happened at church. And like I said, I don't have a lot of these stories, so I'm not going to try and change my ta channel into this because I don't have a lot of paranormal stories. Uh, some people are blessed and cursed to have energies and things around them to pull in these things. I do not, which I'm not envious of them at all. But I hope you enjoyed this story. This was my little Christmas story time, my horror Christmas story time. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. I Again, I hope you have a horrific Christmas or a horrific day, a horrific night, horrific New Year, whatever you are doing. Just have fun with it. Groete, liefde, vrede, vreugde, geluk, blijf so vreugde, mooie, allemaal dinge vir jylle. Don't let fear interfere with your happiness. You deserve all the happiness in the world. Bye!